Thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. This is a little bit of a trial and error situation. I have switched programs. Instead of it being Screencast and Matic are now named ScreenPal, I've switched over to OBS Studio and I'm trying my best to start uh, tweaking a few things here. This will hopefully give me the opportunity to speak a little bit longer. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are saying uh, 15 minutes is long enough to listen to your dulcet voice. But uh, I'm trying to do a couple of things here to improve the channel here and the overall experience on Mark Hogan Weather here on YouTube. And uh, I will be trying to do a live stream, whether it's this upcoming Sunday with the 81st edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report, I don't know. But I'm striving towards that anyway. So bear with me. And this is, uh, like I say, a bit of a trial run today using OBS Studio. I hope the quality is decent enough for you. I hope the picture quality is good enough for you as well. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of the overall experience and the change in the overall program. And also let me know if you're excited about the prospect of a live stream, not every Sunday, but most Sundays. That is the aim that I've got to do a live stream and look at the global aspect, but also interacting with you, the viewer, the subscriber and uh, that nicely takes me on to the plug that I always put out. If you haven't already done so and you're a lover of all things unbiased weather, looking at the big picture, understanding how the weather does what it does, then I hope that this is the channel for you. Uh, I try to do a unique overall experience. It's not perfect by any stretch but uh, I am working hard to try and improve the overall experience. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've been around for some time, thanks for sticking by and, uh, and putting up with me. But we have certainly got a lot of very interesting things going on. And I know I keep saying the same thing, and I do apologize. I'm saying that to my wife, actually, last night on the phone when I was driving down to Glasgow. I feel as if I use the same words and... It does my own head in. It probably does your head in, but it does my head in even more when I'm saying the same words or I'm saying the same phrases. It's not deliberate. Um, I just am trying to improve my delivery and the product that is MarthoganWeather.com. It's been around, believe it or not, since 2012. Actually, the, the domain name MarthoganWeather.com. The YouTube channel has been in existence for 14 years this year, actually. And it's only over recent years that I've really seen the channel grow. I did step away from it for a few years as well, uh, which has to be taken into consideration. But overall, um, recent years has seen a significant growth. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily down to accuracy and forecast. And I think it's just people are clearly seeing something that they're perhaps not seeing elsewhere or they're simply enjoying the content, enjoying learning more about meteorology. And that is basically the strive, the goal that I have here to provide you with something that you're not seeing elsewhere. But there is no question we are living in very mild times indeed. It looks as if this could be one of the warmest Februarys on record for the UK, possibly Ireland, but also across the Atlantic and in the United States and Canada. North America is undergoing exceptional warmth as well. And what is strange about all this is the fact that it's peeled away from the overall uh, the overall driving mechanism that has been controlling our winter so far. MJO, stratospheric warmings, both late autumn, also seen it in January. But we have entered a new form of control in terms of the atmosphere. What exactly that is i don't know but in fact i actually made mention in recent times about the el nino situation and how i think that the peaking late on possibly as as late on as uh, late december the el nino peaked and i personally think i could be wrong but i personally think that this might be the influence now of that el nino taking over the overall pattern because the MJO isn't responding the same way that it, it, it did back in December and January. The stratospheric warming situation doesn't really appear to have done much in terms of you know, negative Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, cold North America, cold Europe, cold Asia. 
it has been a weird winter. Uh, we've seen back and forth. We have seen cold. We have seen snow, particularly so across the north of the UK. I get you folks down in the central and southern UK. I understand it has been a disappointing winter. The winter forecast, I'm not going to go into it again because I've said enough about it. Uh, the caveat was and the, the little detail, little small print at the bottom of the winter forecast highlighted the threat of El Nino biting back and this being a warmer winter than what was perceived to be. I always thought the December through February period would on average be warmer than average, but with a mix of warm and cold spells. Now the question is, or no question about it, should I say, the warmth has well outdone the cold. So trying to be as honest as unbiased as I possibly can be. It's the same with the Global Weather Report every Sunday afternoon that I will give you my opinion. I can see both sides of the climate change argument, etc., etc. And yeah, the obviously a, a step away a wee bit from the unbiased opinion when I give you my own opinion because obviously that has, uh, I suppose that's my opinion. But I try to be as unbiased as I possibly can be. But these were the daytime maximums. Let's get to the weather. I think I've rambled on enough. This is the daytime maximums yesterday afternoon. In three locations, I believe, according to the Met Office, reached 18 Celsius. Not a February record. A couple of years ago, we did see a 21 Celsius achieved. First 21 Celsius ever recorded in the UK and Ireland. Do I think that happened in decades going by, in, in, in you know centuries going by? Yes, I do think that. I do think that we have seen plenty of warm periods in history of the past. And uh, this was the, the, the minimum temperatures, but there's no getting away from how warm it has been and uh, it continues to be. These were the minimum temperatures yes, uh, this morning, should I say, and uh, you'd be hard pushed to see anywhere below freezing last night. Remarkable stuff, actually, for this time of the year. Now, looking at uh, this is the month to date. Uh, so you can see a bit of a contrast over Europe, cold across uh, Scandinavia, but look at the blue torch over the heart of Europe here, warmer than average the majority of U the UK and Ireland. Average conditions clinging on to the northwest of uh, Scotland, as you can see here. And uh, what's rather interesting is this is the upcoming seven-day period, because many people are probably saying, where the heck is the cold if there's none really over North America and Europe? Where is it? It's actually over, uh, over the other side of the pole, over, uh, you know, Asia, and what we are going to see is we are going to see a bit of a decrease in the temperature as we move forward. This is off the ECM, the, sorry, the GFS, uh, extended. This is the ensemble, and you can see here as we play through this loop. Look at the area of uh, anomalous cold over. Asia. If you notice here as we play through this loop, you can actually see where that colder is expanding east and southeast. We are going to see a big shift, and we've seen this a few times over the course of the winter season, over China, the Koreas, Japan, where we've seen record-breaking warm conditions replaced by record or near record-breaking cold conditions, and that's exactly what we're going to see over the eastern side of Asia. Now, we are also keeping a little bit of an eye on North America as well as the UK. Now, we are going to return to average, even slightly below average, as we move into next week here. Uh, but there's a lot of F spots and maybes. But you notice here the amount of cold here over Central and Eastern Asia, Japan, Korea, is, like I say, look at Alaska turning cold here. And when you see Alaska turning cold, there's normally a ridge starting to build over the central and eastern portion of North America. And that appears to be the case. If you look at the temperature profile over North America, once you start to see a trough of cold air moving into this region of the world, you tend to jack up heights and warmth across the central and eastern United States. Um, looking at the month of March, this is very interesting. Kind of a little bit of a back and forth here. But uh, you notice here that we have got the negative Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation signal. And you notice the slight change in the last day or so here where we've now got the, the ribbon of blue representing below average heights. That is essentially where the jet stream and the storm track is. You notice here that it's now forcing it further south of the UK and we're building the heights further 
over the North Atlantic and into southern Greenland here. This would represent a colder theme for the month of March, but it's all to be taken with a grain of salt. And this is the reason why. I quite often look at World Climate Service, a terrific source and very interesting tweets. They are based in State College in Pennsylvania. And this is a very interesting tweet here by them saying that interesting to see that the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, is about to turn sharply positive again immediately following a marginal SSW because Remember what I said in yesterday's video about how the, the, the reversal in the mean zonal winds surrounding the polar vortex actually appears to be weakening that. that the, quick, the thing is, we are going to see, we are seeing a major stratospheric warming. The question is, do we have the definition of a major sun stratospheric warming in the sense that the winds reversed in the winds circling the polar vortex or not? The, the thing is, we are still seeing a strong to major warming from Siberia across the top of the pole and it's displacing the polar vortex and significant weakening is taking place. Similar to a month ago, opposite of what we would typically expect, but on a longer time scale. However, models do expect more persistent stratospheric disruption this time around here. So the Arctic Oscillation over that 45-day period, this is, sorry, apologize. This is the 40 Five day 60 degrees north zonal mean wind at 10 millibars and you notice here that it just gets around about the zero and uh, you notice here that um, it goes back into relatively strong territory and then it drops off there is a final warming at the end of every winter beginning of springtime but it may be quicker that final warming than normal also, on a technical note, our U1060 forecast bias correction is making quite a, a, a large difference in March, suggesting a higher probability of a very early final stratospheric warming, similar to 2016 compared to the ECNWF graphic. So you notice here that it's showing the final warming taking place early March, which is unusually uh, early. It might even be what they're saying, a record early final stratospheric warming while the uh, if you notice here the ecmwf is indicating that it stays above the 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 revert the 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 region of a uh, reversal in the wind mean zone of winds it stays above the zero line for longer into the month of march so there's a bit of a discrepancy going on here but uh, nonetheless um it's i think it's it's quite interesting with regards to the month of uh, of march you can essentially write off February. February has turned out to be an anomalously warm month. And um, what's going to be quite interesting is what what we see during the month of, uh, of March. And uh, listen, there's loads of stuff that we're going to look at in the Global Weather Report this upcoming Sunday with regards to the global temperature anomaly, warmest January on record. Uh, you know, eight months in a row where the temperature is above average. We're going to look at all these things coming up, by the way, in the, the Global Weather Report on Sunday. And hopefully, hopefully, I can get a, a live stream with, with regards to that. Finally, let's have a look at the overview chart of the GFS model here and see what's taking place. Higher pressure is building uh, across southwestern Europe trying to exert its influence further north over the UK and Ireland here. The reason why is we've got storms exit North America. We'll look at the snowstorm that buried Gander in Newfoundland, for example. Uh, snow situation across the eastern side of the United States or northeast, to be exact. The influence that's having on the jet stream clash of air masses over eastern North America is, is strengthening the jet. But essentially, we're not shutting down the jet stream, despite the fact that we've got relatively higher pressure there's a frontal system that moves through later Saturday night here, as you can see. Then we've got a little bit of a gap. Notice here that we continue to see westerlies, which mean that we remain in that mild flow. Then as we start to push towards the early and middle portions of next week here, the jet may be forced a little bit further south. We've got colder air coming in off North America across the Atlantic. Yes, that air mass weakens as it transits the North Atlantic, warmer than average sea surface temperatures. 
and natural weakening of the air mass coming off Canada as it crosses that 1500 mile stretch of Atlantic Ocean. By the time it reaches the UK, however, we could see unsettled conditions, rain, high elevation snow, and we may start to get more snow for the mountainous areas of northern UK. Now notice here, by the time we reach Thursday the 22nd of February, we're starting to see uh, colder air getting drafted southwards. Unsettled conditions, we may increase the chance of seeing snow here, but overall, uh, we continue to see this unsettled theme and a firmly Atlantic-driven pattern overall. Uh, just trying to get the 850 temperatures up here to show you the, the, the idea that I'm talking about here. So you notice here that the polar maritime air becomes a little bit more entrenched over the UK and Ireland. So we're taking that positive anomaly and putting it a little bit negative, a little bit cooler than average here. Still think that we will cool things down next week, but it's all to play for. So I think I've spoken long enough. Like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I do greatly appreciate your support. And let me know what you think of this, uh, this version of video, and uh, we'll take it from there. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Friday evening, and hopefully I'll be back with a short video tomorrow. Bye for now.